So there is another problem and the first problem we're having is the price point. So maybe in super super sales we're having maybe a cheap option but when it comes to out of the box as it's going to be released this isn't quite expensive and if you're looking at the price point we're having so many different options that are maybe better. But let's do a quick overview of the toilet paper metal. Here I have like a 3000 million battery that gives a 5 to 7 hours of game time. So still stating the dual core, no chipset whatsoever. Here having the overview of the manual and also how the menu and everything works. So let's do a quick peek in the inside of the box. So when it comes to the form factor, it's still a very compact, let's say, model. What I do love about it already is like the form factor. You can just see that they did some tweaking and they did put some effort in it. So why is there like greasy finger on my screen? So when you're looking at the back, this is not like some flat device. So when it comes to comfortability, this is very comfortable. However, so you can already see when it comes to some configuration of it, it's kind of weird. So first of all, I don't love it that they're putting the ABXY button underneath because if you're going to be playing D-pad, this would be the best position or that's what I think about it. Overall, let's say the button press, it's quite interesting. The form factor of the buttons, it's quite nice, but you can just see that when you're pressing one button, the other one starts to wiggle. In other words, this is not a good thing. We have seen this with very cheap controllers. So, and it also has this overall like a weird feel with the D-pad normally. I am a little bit disappointed. I wish, I wish they went for like a full D-pad. Let's clean the freaking screen, by the way. There is no screen protector on it. So the joysticks has no click. Well, just these cheap analog, uh, yeah, these cheap analog joysticks, nothing fancy. Select and start in the middle, that's a good position. Volume control, audio jack out, USB for charging, and there is no OTG port, what it actually said. So I'm guessing there is no HDMI out, on and off switch over here. The SD card is implemented at the top with a no brand 64 gigabyte. Man, these things are getting corrupted. Uh, within let's say sometimes a couple of weeks days or sometimes a year or so and what's kind of interesting we have an r2 and an l2 and they are micro switch but the quality wise yeah the problem is that we need to press it exactly here otherwise you're not going to be having any let's say input you can just see that it's kind of weird it isn't white you can actually use it with the r2 but the l2 is absolutely a nightmare Okay, so this is a kind of a fun feature. So we have these stands that implement it, so you can just put it on your desk. Okay, that's cool, but maybe kind of pointless. So let's clean this freaking screen, by the way. That's annoying me. We do have some widescreen shenanigans. However, so select, you need to press when getting into the MAME and Neo Geo. Pressing both of them will get you the special menu. And here having quick load, quick save. So the same function is kind of deluxe. Okay, so let's start off with the game. All right, let's select and start. Let's load. I love it when they make these tiny screenshots and that works like a charm. So quick load, quick save. I love it that we have like different menu or at least a special picture with the menus where we can easily switch. So the D-pad itself is not going to be a pleasant experience. Joystick seems to be working fine. Seems to be working fine. You see, trying to shoot different directions with a D-pad, it's just freaking impossible. The display, however, is absolutely beautiful. I think even the camera picks it up. So when it comes to that, it's great. But also the audio. This tiny speaker at the back sounds amazing. But let's get in some other games. More widescreen shenanigans, yep. That is what we're getting with this freaking device. I find it a little bit of a downside that we don't have the option to change out the aspect ratio. And the reason why, because we have seen cheap devices that actually have no problem with that. Game sticks that can just switch easily through, let's say, different ratios, regions, you name it. But we cannot do this with this. And that's one of those many things I've been complaining for many years now. I think we should put it on the t-shirt. There is always something they mess up. And that is a fact. Hey. Ah, there goes my egg. This, by the way, it's the cheating version. We cannot die. <laughs> Next up, some Super NES. Mm, it seems to be there is no problem with the emulation itself. No weird audio things going on. So the audio is already maxed up. I love it when you're going to be pushing 
the volume button you can just actually see how much power your battery still has so far so good so that's great to see that we can actually have some good performance here but the d-pad is not pleasant to play with these kind of games Raymond performance of Super NES is great, absolutely. But one of the things I really hate about these devices, when they're putting a list on here, and everything is going to be having a problem with alphabetic order, and I'm guessing this has to do of, let's say, the numbers up front of it. However, it's just one huge mess, and I hate it. We do have a search option, that's cool, but still a mess, absolutely. And but let's get into some emulation of the Sega Genesis and that seems to be working all fine so far. Yep, sound effects right here. And you know how the game plays? Push him in the face and kick him in the balls. That's how we go to play Beef Cave turns into Wolfie. Okay. The only weird thing is that we have this... No! This jump button. Go! Ah, yeah! And it just get punched in the face. Ah, ah. However, emulation performance is great. We can also make quick load, quick save here, but no SPS ratio. That would be a great upgrade for the next time. So let's move on into some rally on the Game Boy Advance. I think a Game Boy Advance will utilize the screen a little bit better than a normal Game Boy, but let's find out if we can actually play the game and how the emulation performance is. So far, so good. No weird audio glitches whatsoever. Also, the audio sounds great. Oh, there's my brake. Crap, I didn't know. Don't you love that these games all look and sound sometimes the same? Every single time I'm looking at this, the only thing I see is some Super Mario Kart. But maybe that's me. But it's kind of fun. Something different with a car. Driving fast. It's a kind of cool game, by the way. Ooh. I love rally games. Seriously, I love them. Ugh. But the overall emulation performance is nice. Next up, some PC Engine, but I did notice some minor hiccups again in the beginning. You can hear the audio. That is struggles. So the emulation is not perfect on PC Engine part, where it's a minor dip. It is a dip. Yeah, so that's a little bit of a shame that PC Engine doesn't run 100%. So first of all, we didn't check out any main games. We did particularly like the Neo Geo part in the beginning. So let's see how this will run. Okay. Do feels a little bit choppy, but maybe that's just me. Oh no, it runs choppy, you can just hear it on the audio part. And this is mainly to do that they are just setting up the wrong emulator. So with those emulator emulator devices or handhelds that we can switch emulators, sometimes it's an easy fix by switching a different emulator within a couple of games and we're ready to go. But yep, what you see is what you're getting and with the main part they completely messed it up. And take note that there's going to be just one single game like the 64 Street game that sometimes struggle with certain emulators. It is playable, but with some dips. But let's check out what we're getting when it comes to the overall software. So pressing start of select, there is nothing we're getting over here when it comes to extra menu or settings. So we're having the all list, we have some MAME, PlayStation. So we do have a lot of new systems compared with the SF2000. So where the SF2000 wasn't dedicated, let's say, very basic emulator device, this thing comes a little bit more features when it comes to emulators. So that's kind of interesting. We're having the download folder over here where we can implement new games and with favorites. That's one of the things I love about these things. However, there's a kind of interesting option when getting into a list and you're pressing the Y over here, we have the option to search. So let's do it at first. Like always, let's search for Sonic. And uh, let's see what we're having with this. So we do have all kinds of lists. It doesn't really state so far. I can see what kind of platform it is. 
So we can also make it in favorite. So let's say I want to save the sonic wing as favorite, pressing the X. So what is cool about this? So let's go all the way back. I say go all the way back. And okay. Let's go back here. Having history. So the history is kind of cool. We can see what kind of game has been played. And then the favorite list. And this is the single game that I've saved out. So that's kind of cool. So in here we're having all kinds of different solutions. Kind of basic, but for I think for most people are this just just enough.